Well, that was question period today as the government's plan to acquire new fighter jets was front and center. Now let's get our view from the Hill on this and other hot topics of the day. Joining me is Liberal MP Stephen McKinnon, Parliamentary Secretary, uh, of course, to many important files. Uh, we have Lisa Raid, of course, the Conservatives and Nathan Cullen of the NDP. Um, you know, we've listened to a lot of the information here. We've, we've heard all about these used planes that are now going to be bought. I remember a year ago when your government was so excited about the Super Hornets. They were the only possible option. There was a deadly capability gap. And now suddenly it turns out we could have just bought 18 of the exact same planes we're already flying now. Why didn't you do that? I, I asked the minister this, but, you know. Well, there is still a capability gap. And in... Uh, is, is there? Absolutely there is. We have uh, obligations to NORAD, obligations to NATO, domestic requirements. But your government won't release aircraft. any evidence of it. Well, we have, I think we've well documented that, and not only that... <laughs> no, the, well, the you, they actually won't the defense, release any of the numbers the, about the, it. The defense white paper goes on at length about how we we started out with some 130 CF-18s. We're down to a more or less 75 right now. So Canada's requirements... So how requirements, many do we need for the Canada's to be requirements again? in... Uh, well, we, we, we were intending to buy uh, 18 Super Hornets. We're buying now 18 Australian... Um, uh, F-18s, and we will be, as the U.S. Navy does, as the Canadian uh, Royal uh, Air Force does, we will be doing life extensions on those. Canada is very good at that. We've developed and perfected... Those old planes that are falling out of the sky, <laughs> that we, we've perfected keeping them up there. We've, You're we've actually more perfected those. airframe uh, management of those. We've perfected uh, keeping them going, and absolutely, we have uh, every confidence that these planes will bridge that gap uh, to the very exciting news that was announced today, which is the full fleet replacement, not of 65 and an uncosted 65, which is the file that we inherited, but of 88 aircraft, again, which will f uh, fulfill all of our needs, all of our obligations to our allies, all of our domestic needs, and will uh, be the biggest and most exciting procurement ever uh, undertaken in the Canadian aerospace industry. And I think the industry can look very much forward to uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in opportunities, and we're very excited about that right across Canada. The biggest and most exciting. Okay, well, uh, Lisa, yeah. I know that, that your, your government was in before. You had a chance to take a yeah. look at these numbers. I don't think anyone's questioned that the CF-18s are old. There have long been concerns mm -hmm. they could, quote-unquote, fall out of the sky mm -hmm. or that we could have attrition to such a number that we simply don't have enough to meet our, our uh, you know, capabilities right. and requirements. Is this maybe the best short-term option that the government's come up with, that at least they're not mixing two different kinds of aircraft, it's the same kind, we know what to do, and mm. it's relatively cheap? Well, uh, first of all, when they announced that they were going to be purchasing, I thought they missed two, two words, four parts, in the announcement, because they are as old as our fleet is. And there is much ado made, as you pointed out, Mercedes, about the capability issues. And that's why we're going down one path. Look, the Liberals are going down one path, then they change course, they go down another, then they go down another. And we have to think about what's best for the military, the men and women who are going to be flying these planes and making sure they're safe. But that's only one part of the problem. The second part of the problem was what you pointed out, which is what do our allies think about it? And I don't think that we're hearing great words of comfort on whether or not these extra CF-18s are actually going to allow us to match up with what Russian stealth aircraft are going to be doing as we take part in NATO. So I think there's some significant problems. And then on the procurement side, the final piece, this isn't an open competition. It can't be an open competition when they make the very specific um, condition that another country or another company cannot be doing anything to be the detriment of the economic interests of Canada. What the heck oh, does imagine, that mean? Ima imagine, oh. you can't do economic so, harm to Canada. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Go ahead, Nathan. I've got family uh, that have served in the military, and a frustration they have when they watch politicians in Parliament debate these things back and forth is they seem to be forgotten. And why is it so hard to buy stuff, from icebreakers to helicopters to fighter jets? So let's take this last one. As, as you pointed out rightly, uh, healthy skepticism from a government that says we have a capability gap, and we say, okay, show us the proof and what is it? And they say, we have a capability gap, as if that were proof. It's not. The government needs to be clear. What's, what are we buying jets for? What exactly are we buying jets for and how many do we need? Second, we're two years into this government, and their solution to our very aging fighter fleet is to buy exactly the same age fighters from Australia. I, I, it, it seems to me it almost looks like an acquisition for parts to keep our yeah, jets up in the air. Exactly. Which may be a, an option the government's considering that, okay, we, this is the fleet we have. We're not going to get to any new jets mm -hmm. by the time the next election rolls around. 
But again, back to the men and women who bravely serve in our forces, they're saying, why is this so difficult on so many different fronts to simply buy things that the government knows we need in order to perform our duties for Canadians? I just, I don't know why this fanfare about two years into the process, they're saying, well, we're going to go to Australia and buy their used stuff. It's as old as the stuff that we have right now and everyone mm -hmm. should be happy and satisfied. Well, and Steve, let's, let's talk about that a bit because your government was very intent on doing the right thing for pilots. This was about pilots' lives. And suddenly we have this very odd phrase about the economic impact of Canada. Now, that could clearly only be talking about Boeing. I don't think there's been a suggestion that any other aerospace company was having a negative impact on Canada. Aren't you putting politics above the needs of the military? No, what we're having is an open competition, something that uh, our predecessors were not able to do in 10 years. So we're going out to the entire world, those companies that qualify, that are allied and and, and whatnot, and we are going to put, have them put together packages uh, on cost, on capability, which will be carefully defined, uh, well, on well, industrial okay. and technological benefits to Canada. These things are, uh, are very common to procurements. This is a particularly large Maybe and important procurement. procurement. We did buy uh, CF-18s in the 1980s, so this is not something you do every day uh, or every decade for that matter. But it's a very exciting opportunity for Canadian companies, Canadian supply chains. We could name them. There's a list as long as my arm of companies who participate in these procurements, okay. who are very excited yeah. about it, who employ actual sure. Canadians in Winnipeg, not Bombardier in, by any in chance, Montreal. Is it? <laughs> wow. Well, there are, there, I could start to name them. Magellan, Aru DevTech. <laughs> there are companies <laughs> right across this country from okay. Vancouver to uh, the East Coast that participate okay. in our aerospace industry. I, that that I, should I not be minimized. I want to give a chance to Lisa Nathan here, because we did have the minister as well. But Thanks Lisa, go things. ahead. Uh, what I was going to say is, I mean, we're very much aware what the supply chains are in aerospace in this country because we had a whole bunch of companies lining up and relying upon the F-35 acquisition. This government ran a campaign belittling the entire process, belittling those who were in that chain, and they said they were going to have another plan and they were going to do things differently. They haven't done a thing. They haven't done a thing. They haven't advanced the file. Well, it's another case. Well, two years in, we're buying planes. Uh, no, you're buying yeah, carbs. Yeah, you're not buying so that's planes. A, that's an interesting thing because I think the condition they're trying to put on as well as serving our pilots and making sure they have the best stuff is this economic lens. Mm -hmm. And you can argue whether that should be the top order or the pilot's interest should be top order and NATO allies and all those other considerations. It is confusing because buying used planes from Australia doesn't do much for the Canadian economy. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Because... We're not building these used planes. We're just buying them. Mm -hmm. uh, this is second, uh, maybe the concern is with Boeing in, in particular is to not name them but exclude them, avoiding lawsuits. But there is there is a obvious problem with this one company, and I'm not going to disagree with the government in terms of its actions and the Trump administration and on and on. But what seems to get lost in this again and again is the people who have to put their lives on the line. And I just don't know if the Air Force is going to feel so much more confident getting into a 30-year-old well, Australian jet versus getting into a 30-year-old well, Canadian jet when we said the 30-year-old Canadian jets are really a problem. We have to know that they can well, fly in the Arctic. Let's be clear. We, there's a series there's, of questions that no, remain. No, there isn't a today. fighter aircraft that goes into the sky that's not 100% safe. We are very good at pro prolonging and extending the life of these planes. That work is done in Canada. It's not just done for Canadian planes, but it's done for U.S. and allied planes. And the uh, Royal Canadian Air Force, what they want are more planes available. That is exactly what we are providing to well, them today. And they want planes. increased visibility of when the full fleet replacement is going to occur. Now we, they have a date. Now it's costed. They've had just, like all, uh, just like all of the, well, our other like material Cassidy, requirements are costed planes. in our defense how, how white paper. How can you know you need 88 if you don't know what plane you're getting? Because the, we, we rely on the advice and the experts of our generals. You heard, you heard uh, uh, C, former question. CDS Lawson uh, uh, on this no, very set a couple of days ago say exactly that, that this is no, a seamless transition no, for our I, pilots, is, so they can go into is, pilot the planes that they well, no, know. The 88 this is, or the this new is, planes. This is the, yeah, yeah. the 88 new, it, it, when you say, okay, that many planes, if you run it across all the different uh, portfolios that planes have, you might need 90 of one plane and 80 of another or 70 of another if they have more capability. Yeah. If what it, what it is is we're buying these planes to be able to participate fully in NATO, for example, some planes can do more. Some right. of them cost a lot more. But to just pick a number and say, well, how do you know 88? And the government's response is, because it's 88. That doesn't make any sense if they haven't actually picked the plane yet. Usually the number goes with the plane, depending on what it is that you're asking the plane to do. 
this is what's so frustrating about this procurement thing. How many interviews have you done over the years, whatever the material being bought, where it just seems to get stuck and problematic, and at the end of the day, we're buying new stuff again, like we did with submarines, and saying, we'll get there eventually, and we just seem to kick the can further and further down the road. Lisa, do you think that this potentially has an impact on NAFTA? Because we're talking about Boeing yeah, pretty clearly here question. in the middle of negotiations. I think I think anything we do that has an impact on the United States economy is going to have an impact on NAFTA because everything is being watched. And I do I am I'm very much aware of the fact that our new ambassador from the United States is from a state which has a very big Boeing presence. And that's going to be something that she's going to be watching, and she'll be reporting that back. So I think it's part of our, our relations for sure. And I want to see how they're going to um, I see get we're being out very of... consistent with Stephen Harper's advice. Stephen Harper's advice, look, let's just give them what they want and get this over with and sign on the dotted line on mm -hmm. that NAFTA thing. Let's not negotiate. Let's not offend no, no, anyone. Let's that. not stick up Stephen, for a, Canadian interests, a, wow. for the, supply management, the, hold on, for anything knowing, else, for our companies. I think this was a let's fair just question. Do, let's, not let's just do it and, uh, uh, knowing, and not knowing, offend the Americans. Knowing the administration yeah. that's there now yeah. in Washington, one could easily foresee if Canada says, this is how we're going to buy some new planes and we're going to exclude a company Boeing's that Mr. Trump has put a lot of his political capital yeah. behind. Of course, it affects the conversation. I think it's a fair question. I, I would, just wouldn't be so casual about it okay. and yeah. suggesting that if well, the government... It's like when there's someone... The NDP would not have had a oh. sign NAFTA. Oh. Let's just be clear That's Okay, that. we're going to wrap it up on that since we're going down the NAFTA rabbit hole. But thank yeah, you yeah. very much to our MPs. We'll see you next week. Thanks for saying